name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today we see one of the Gospels we're very familiar with, where the people were very hungry, people were very, very, very hungry, and Jesus looked at them and said to the disciples, we need to feed them. And the disciples, of course, were panicking. They said, we can't feed them. We don't have any money. We don't have any way to feed all these people. And this is where Jesus comes through and teaches us a great lesson today when he feeds the multitudes. And we know it wasn't just a few people because if you have your Bibles open in John chapter 6, verse 5, it says there was a great multitude. There was a great number of people in John 6 verse 5. And then in John 6 verse 6, it says kind of the verse I want us to focus on. So if you have your Bibles, let's open it together. In John chapter 6 verse 6, it says, like he was kind of testing them. He said, but this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. You know, he was talking to them, so how are we going to feed them? Jesus is saying this. How are we going to feed them? But Jesus was saying that because he was testing them. And he wasn't just testing them. I want to explain how he was testing us today and how he wants to test us in our life to grow us, okay? Okay. I want to say something here. <clears throat> when we run into a problem, God knows the solution, but we don't. And God will put us through the situation to help grow us, but He already knows the solution. And we're panicking. And we're, we have anxiety, and we're worried, but God already knows what? The solution. It says here, He Himself knew what He would do. But He's talking to disciples just to see what they're thinking. Just to see how He can help them grow up. So when we face a problem, God already knows the solution. Yes, we don't know the solution. That's why we panic. That's why we get worried. We don't know. But I want you to remember something. He knows the solution. He's just putting us through kind of a test to grow us up. Now, here in the Gospel, what did Philip say? Look at your Bibles. What did Philip say? I want, to, I want you to be a little bit more active. What did Philip say? Yes. He said that this money is not Yeah. Very good, Brian. Let's give Brian a big hand. He's paying attention today. Yeah. He said, hey, hey, Jesus, we can't, we can't feed all these people. We've got no money. Everyone's looking in their pockets. You got any money? Hey, Andrew, you got any money? Hey, John, you got any money? Peter, you got... No, I got no money. We only, have, we only have little money. And isn't that what we do when we have problem? When we have problem, we try to think how we're going to solve it. We try to solve it with money. Money's the answer. We don't have money. We can't solve the problem. Isn't that what we do? We do that with all of our situations. God wants to teach us something today. We can't solve problems like that. God has a way that He's going to make it happen. But it's not always looking in your pocket and say, Ooh, I don't have enough money, sorry, I can't solve the problem. There's other ways God can work. So I'm more like Philip, by the way. I'm more logical, me personally. I like to think, okay, wait, this plus this, no, we can't manage. But God is a little bit above that. 
Don't try to always solve it like me, thinking here, logically. Yes, we should be logical, but we should have wisdom. We should have something from above to guide us through our problems, okay? <clears throat> <laughs> okay, now, what did Andrew do? Look at your Bibles. What did Andrew do? Ah. We're in John 6. What did Andrew do? We're from 5 to 14. John 6 from 5 to... What did Andrew... Philip said we don't have any money. You know, he's, he's trying to think clearly. We can't do this project. We don't have enough money. Finished. What did Andrew do? Who can say? Huh? What do you think? Andrew, did he do anything? You guys don't have Bibles? Look at your Bibles. I, I can't help you. Look at your Bibles. Look at your Bibles. You should have a Bible with you. What did Andrew do? Huh? What did Andrew do? Huh? Don't be afraid to bring a Bible to church. It's not against the law here in Zambia. You can bring a Bible. It, it's legal. Yes. It's legal in Zambia. You can bring Bibles to church. Mm. What do you think? What did Andrew do? Andrew fell asleep? Andrew cursed Jesus? Okay, but you told me half the story. What, the, what else did he say? He said, there's a boy here who has five loaves and two fish. But what did he say next? That's, what? No. It's not enough. So he kind of gave half of an answer. He said, here's a boy. He's got his lunch here. It's five bread and two fish. But it's not enough. And I think, look guys, we think like that. We think like Philip and Andrew. We can't. Our problem is too big. There's no way. I, I can't manage. There's not enough. And we always have this attitude of, I can't, and no way, and it's just too hard. All of us have that. Isn't that true? God's going to tell us today how to get out of this spirit of negative and how to get out of the spirit of, we can't manage. The disciples were the leaders, the great ones. The boy actually was coming, this great young boy, with a little bit of faith. He said, here, Jesus. But Andrew, who's supposed to be the great disciple, said, this can't be enough. We can't manage. And I think we're like the disciples. We keep saying we can't. It's too hard. We can't manage to fix this problem. And I think today God wants to teach us a little bit of a lesson. <clears throat> I want to remind you before I give you the two points today Jesus was doing all this why? Why did Jesus give this big problem and challenge to the disciples? Because John 6.6 6 says, But this he said to what? Test him. He himself knew what he would do. I want you to remember that. We may be facing a situation right now that's too hard for us. And we're like Philip and Andrew saying, There's no way. But I want you to remember, the situation we face is probably something God is testing us in to grow us. And I want to tell you two reasons why He wants to test us. Why does God put us through this situation? Why does He want to test me? I don't need any test, God. Leave me alone. I'm just, let me be at peace, God. I don't need problems right now. I don't need to be worried about it. Leave me alone, God. Let me just live my life normal. And God says, no, I need to challenge you and I need to test you for two reasons that I want to talk about today. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
ya zambia sera wanu wose wanya ni bonso wana bereza challenge ya kukulu kuli wa jokunzi na wake kwa mba kwa wafu so adjesele ni watu adjesele ni watu kwa usakina ni njira ina alari kuwae sa kutuma zao kutu ya kule muzimu ni bonso chimozi mozi na iso mwe watu murunga mbomeleza makutu ya liyo sukupeze kamkati ya mwe watu chifukwa za chani chifukwa murunga kula ise tikurupirile kwa iye ni bonso tikunzile kuchete kila kwa iye kutu iye ndia mine asita bandi amina asili za kutu ili osi so the first reason why God is testing us is God is testing in order to strengthen. Okay, I want you to think about that. God is testing us in order to strengthen us. I'll give you examples in the Bible. Turn with me to the Bible. So number one, God is testing us in order to strengthen us. And you're going to get that from, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 4. Let's turn our Bibles together. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 12 and 13. 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13. So God is testing us in order to strengthen us. Listen to this. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. What God is trying to say in 1 Peter is this. Everyone pay attention here. It's God is trying to say, I'm going to put you through a, a trial. He called it here, fiery trial. I mean, really tough trial. In order for you to see my glory. In order to make you stronger. And I think some, and even says you should be joyous. Joyous? If you don't believe Peter, then maybe you can believe James. Let's open up James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 2 says the same exact thing. James chapter 1 verse 2 says, hey, you should be joyous in your problems because you're going to be tested so you can produce patience and patience is going to make you perfect. So what am I trying to tell you today is in James chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4, God is ready to test us to make us perfect. I know we don't like that, but God is testing us in order to strengthen us. So the child came in and said, "I said, 'Kuti se tukita makuto, kuti se tuwa ne ule mireluaki. Nipozo chimozi mozi na muri muri ya kopo kapeleti Jamesi. Akamba chimozi mozi udeti. Kiza sendi tingale o kondoera. Pamene isi tukita makuto, kuti se mumba se pani. Atiriki se kapina kipasi nchini zote pani zamuri zamuzimu." Let me give you an example. Many of you, I'm sure, been to school before. How do the teachers make the, the children stronger in the school? What do they do? What do they do? Yeah. Yes. And then after some time, they give them what? A test. Why? They want to punish the kids? They want to make them what? Better. Look, teachers give tests to children to make them better. Even coaches, if you ever played sports before, coaches put the players through a hard test. Why? Make them better. <clears throat> How come we don't accept that from God? We can accept that from a teacher. We can accept it from a coach. We can accept that from God. God is the good teacher. God is the one who wants... Why does He want to test us to make us better, to make us stronger, to help us go higher? Don't be afraid of God's test. God is testing us to what? What's number one? To strengthen us. God is testing us to strengthen us. He's not doing it to punish us. Remember that. In James chapter 1, it's very clear. Be joyous. You're going to go through a trial, but the trial is going to make you patient. Patient will make you perfect. Let's let God put us through the test. He did it with His disciples today, and the disciples learned a lesson. Hey, we need to trust in Him. We need to trust in him. Look what he did with all these people. We need to trust in him. God wants us to be the same. God is testing us in order to strengthen us. I <clears throat> <clears throat> 
ukapenda kutiesa utu ya tipatse mpambu ukono kapenda kilimbise mwoyo mwati I was in Congo last week <clears throat> and I heard a story of in Congo they discovered this beautiful 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 diamond huge huge diamond you know in Congo there's a lot of different minerals and, 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 and things like that and diamonds are there everywhere so in Congo they discovered this beautiful beautiful diamond is huge worth maybe billions of dollars so they brought it to a person called a gemologist someone who knows the gems he's professional in, in the jewels and the gems so he was looking at the diamond and all the people are looking at him and saying what is this guy going to do what is he going to say like how much is this thing worth so what happened in this true story the gemologist cut into the diamond right down the middle everyone started panicking everyone started getting upset this guy just ruined the diamond he ruined the diamond so most of the people in the room started shouting at him insulted him they wanted to beat him up and they wanted to fight him and they wanted to really kill him because you don't do stuff like that in Congo <laughs> you don't do stuff like that and what happened was the gemologist was right he was cutting the diamond in a certain way to bring to keep its value if he didn't do that cut if he didn't do what he was supposed to do the value of the diamond would not remain everybody was upset but only few people in the room knew that this is the way it should be done the diamond needs to be cut and I was thinking about that this is what God does with us sometimes we're gonna be injured or cut or hurt and we think it's the end of the world but God said I'm doing that so you can remain valuable you can remain strong we think it's bad when God does his work on us and puts us under pressure but God said no I'm doing that so you can retain your value you can be more valuable more stronger maybe we don't understand why God does what he does but we should understand one thing God is testing us for what to strengthen us remember let's say it together God is testing us and never forget that just like the diamond why did you do that hey the gemologist knows what he's doing God knows what he's doing we don't understand it but we know he's doing something for our betterment okay Niponsa <laughs> The next thing I want to say to you, and I'm only going to give you two things today, is that I really love the story of the little boy. We talked about it earlier. This little boy was a little lad, it says in the Bible, and he brought Jesus how many bread? Thank you, five loaves and two fish. And if you're a little boy today in the church, you should be happy and proud of yourself because Jesus is saying, this little boy gave little and God made it much. I want you to think about that for a second. A little boy gave little, but God made it much. And I think sometimes we don't understand that philosophy with God. Sometimes we don't understand that strategy. We think that I have little, what is little going to do? Andrew said that today. What is little going to do? And Philip said the same thing. We don't have enough money. So I want you to remove that from your brain. And I need to remove it from my brain, which is this. Little is not little. Little in the hands of God is what? 
It's much. When I give God my problem, my situation, my offering, my whatever, what does God do? He does much. Please, I'm not trying to preach to you today. I know it's always like a preaching on Sunday, but I want us to talk about reality. When we try to solve a problem, it remains little. If we took the five loaves and two bread in any of our hands, or any of the disciples' hands, or the child's hands, it would remain little. But as soon as he gave it to Jesus, and Jesus took that situation into his hands, he made it much. Little is little in our hands. Little is much in his hands. Don't try to solve your problem. Don't try to think of a solution only by logic and by money. It's never going to work. It's never going to work. You, we always say, only if I had that. No. This boy understood little in the hands of God is a lot, is much. Let's remember that today. So God was testing us first to strengthen us. But I would say this one, number two, is God is testing us so we can taste Him. We can understand Him. We can understand that life in His hands is better. So number two is God is testing us so we can taste Him. When I say taste, I don't mean like you're going to taste something, but I'm saying you're going to understand that when life is in, when my problem is in His hands, it's going to be solved. When I keep worrying and, and fighting, how many times do you use this thing? It's like a mo- and keep thinking, what about this? What about this? Let me talk. And we can talk to this person. We can do this. Nothing. I'm telling you guys, I'm not trying to preach to you, but I just know that when it's in God's hands, we're going to see the same kind of miracle today. God is testing us in order to strengthen us, but God is testing us so we can taste Him. We can taste how great life is with Him. Who remembers the two things? Before I give you the conclusion, number one, what? God. Let's say that one again. Number one is what? How about in the back of the church there, the girls in the back? Number one is what? <laughs> What's number one altogether? When you're going through a test, don't blame anybody. <clears throat> don't blame anybody. It could be God that you're blaming. He's putting us through a test in order to make us stronger. Number two is what? God is testing us. You know, we can taste Him. We can understand that life in His hands, problem in His hands, tastes so much better. In our hands, it's only little. In His hands, it's much. Those two things. There was a story of a Navy submarine. You know what a submarine is? It's a ship underwater. Okay? There's a Navy, there's a true story of a Navy submarine underwater. Actually, it had a problem. The enemy attacked 
and bombed the Navy submarine and it exploded on one side of the ship, one side of the submarine. There were survivors inside. They went to an area where there was a rescue capsule. There's a section of a submarine where you, you get in, a small area, and you, you push the button and it takes you to the top and you're saved. So the people who were still alive, it's a true story, the people who were still alive in the submarine that was hit by the bomb rushed to the rescue capsule, the place where you can get in there, push a button, and go to the top and you're saved. Here's the problem. They went into the capsule, they pushed the button, it didn't launch. It didn't launch. It didn't launch until they died. Investigators, after two days, discovered that the rescue capsule was never tested. They never tested the rescue capsule to make sure it's working. So what happened is everybody died. Now why am I telling you a story about the Navy submarine? I said to you earlier, testing is good. If they would have tested that submarine to make sure it works, they would have survived. But they didn't and they all died. We don't want testing from God. We need it or we're not going to make it. We need God to test us. We don't like it. We don't like the problem. We don't like the trial. We don't like the tough situation. I don't like it and you don't like it. But we need it. We need that problem. We need the trial. Why? To strengthen us. Number two, so we can taste how amazing God is. No test. We're going to be weak Christians. You know what a weak Christian looks like? A weak Christian is useless. Let me say that again. A weak Christian is useless. God said, I can't leave my children like that. I can't leave my children like that. I'm going to test them. I'm going to test them. And I'm going to test them to make them stronger. To make them know in my hands things are better. Let's not be afraid. Let's not worry when you face a problem. But rejoice. What did James say today? Rejoice when you fall into various trials because you will produce patience and you will produce perfection. Don't be afraid. I hate problems as much as you do. I hate trials as much as you do. I hate the testing of God as much as you do. But I know I need it. And you need it to make us stronger. The worst thing we can see is weak church, weak Christians, weak family, no faith, no anything, always defeated, always down. God was telling the disciples today, teaching them how to be strong because they had a mission one day to be alone. Andrew and Philip, they ended up doing great things in their life, but God had to put them through a test. Testing is good. It strengthens us and it helps us to taste how amazing the Lord is. Mm. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I think when you're all sitting in the church today you're probably thinking about your problems and your situations maybe you have a problem at home with your family maybe it's a health problem maybe it's you just have a problem with your wife or your husband or your children or 
Maybe you have a problem at work. Maybe work is not that good right now. Maybe your business is not that good. Maybe there's financial problems. Maybe there's just challenges all around you. Don't blame anyone. Please, don't blame anyone. God is testing in order to make us stronger. Remember that, please. You might have problems at school. God is testing in order to strengthen. Don't forget, number one, let's say it all together. God, I think number one needs to be a little bit louder. Number one is what? God is testing us in order to strengthen us. Number two is what? So God is doing what He's doing not to make a big problem for you. I, wanted, I, I heard something last week, I liked it. It said, most times in life, we feel the, the challenges and problems are like a big stone. A big stone in my way. I can't manage to cross into a better life. There's a big stone. And someone said, one of the great leaders said, you can look at it two ways. That this big stone in your life is blocking your way as a stumbling stone or it's a stone that you can step on as a stepping stone to climb higher. Did you guys get that? The stone in your life, the problem in your life can be looked at two ways. One, it's a, a stumbling stone I can't pass, I can't reach my, my future. I'm stuck. Or you can look at it as, this stone is a stepping stone. I can step on it and climb higher. Which one do you look at it? When you have a problem, is it a stumbling stone or a stepping stone? God wants to say, I'm doing that in your life to make it a stepping stone. God is doing our life to strengthen us. You're facing what you're facing, I'm facing what we're facing. Hey, we all face something. We all face something. But it's to make us go higher. It's a stepping stone. Don't look at it as, man, I can't get through. This stone, is, this problem is too hard. I can't manage. I can't do it. It's too hard. And we give up. And we're discouraged. No. It's not a stumbling stone. It's a what? Stepping stone. Can we say that? It's not a stumbling stone. It's a... You're going to climb higher. If you want, this problem can make you greater, make you stronger. Look throughout the Bible. You've seen Joseph in the Old Testament. Through all his problems, he became great. Daniel, the same thing. Look through anybody in the Bible. They had big challenges. God used it to launch them higher. Maybe God is putting you and me through a test today, not to defeat us, but to make us victorious. God is testing us in order to strengthen us. God is testing us in order we can taste how sweet He is. It's not a stumbling stone, it's a stepping stone. Let's pray for that in liturgy today. Say, God, I have these big problems, these big stones, I can't manage. Let it be a stepping stone for my life. Pray for that with me in liturgy today. Don't be defeated today in the church. Be encouraged. The test could be from God to make us higher. Accept the test. You can't say no to a test at school. You have to accept the test. But it makes you better. Not a stumbling stone, but a stepping stone. Today in liturgy, when you close your eyes and pray, say, God, this is too hard for me. I can't manage. But I know you can. Take me higher. When you do that, God will take you higher. And instead of being defeated by problems, you grow, grow stronger. That's life of a Christian. Life of a Christian is looking at it from a different view. It's not a stumbling stone. It's a what? Stepping stone. Remember that. Praying for you one another. Glory be to God forever. Amen.